What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Eclectic Musings Podcast. Now, well, the last episode was basically just, hey, uh, you know, I'm back. We're doing stuff different. Um, this go around, this this is going to be a little bit probably longer of a podcast because at least here at the beginning of it, before I get into any kind of music reviews or anything like that, number one, for, for anybody that comes in that's not like a regular subscriber and doesn't know, um, I do reactions on YouTube. Um, I started on YouTube doing doing beer reviews. I moved to doing reactions. And the reason why I, I decided to restart the podcast and take it a whole different route, I'm actually starting a separate podcast outside of this one. Um, I think there's a general maturation. I don't even know if you could call it a maturation process, right? You take a look through most YouTube channels. And it doesn't matter if they start by taking an just posting silly goofy videos whenever they're younger and then normally you get it seems to be a trend almost like you'll you'll take and get go from videos like that to either they go straight from doing stuff like that to making videos where they're doing reactions or they're talking about youtube drama or pop culture type stuff uh that's going on over the backdrop of like video gaming or something like that. It'll have the gameplay and everything like that in the background. So I, I've already had a couple of iterations here on YouTube. Like I've went from doing the beer reviews and I went from doing beer reviews to reactions. I actually went from doing beer reviews to reactions to actually one of the reactions that I did was to the Tesla Cybertruck. And let me move my camera around here real quick. Most anybody that listens to this on anchor or spotify or anything like that's like what what are you talking about video um anyways so i went from actually doing the beer reviews to doing reactions but i come across the cyber truck reaction so or the cyber truck unveiling and i actually did a reaction to that because i woke up one morning and that was the trending thing on the news was that, uh elon musk unveils cyber truck for tesla i'm like Wait a minute, so you're going to be an electric truck? Let me take a watch this thing. And I took and did a reaction to the Tesla Cybertruck unveiling. And I've owned trucks. Like, I use trucks on job sites and stuff like that. So I've got a little bit more of, you, you see these vehicle reviewers and stuff like that. A lot of times they're these slick looking fellas. And they know their stuff, granted. They they get they get you all the specs and they take them to through test drives and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it, I think in my mind, like you, you get the technical aspect, but you're not going to take and get like the everyday man's point of view. And I think people saw that for whatever reason in my reaction to the unveiling. Just number one at the specs, the price, things I was seeing on screen and stuff like that. And the reaction got shared to, oh, got shared to some Tesla forums. It got shared to Reddit. Uh, it got shared to a couple different places. And like, I recorded the video and I just moved on. I didn't think nothing of it. I mean, I, I checked analytics of it. And I was like, oh, you know, I got four or five, 600 views. And, and I've only been doing reactions for like three or four weeks. That's, you know, really hit. You know, I'm glad it's doing so good. And then I took and went right back to reacting to music and stuff like that. Because at the time I was just taking reacting to like South Park Mexican and, um, I think I've done an ICP reaction. I did a Lincoln Park. There's a concert, not the, not the full concert, but the song from a concert, and I hadn't seen that performance yet, so I took and did a reaction to that. And a, a Gray Days, a, a reaction to a Gray Days uh, song where they actually took and redid. Uh, Chester had been in the studio before his death and was redoing the lyrics and stuff like that. So I, I'd already been doing reactions. I just went right back to doing that, and I think I started looking at Grime at that point in time. So I had that going and I, I noticed like two weeks later, I was looking in my analytics and I seen top videos last 48 hours. And this is when I figured out number one, as a YouTuber, that analytics are the king. Like, you're like, whoa, that, that tells you which way you might need to take and go with things, whether you need to take and shorten your intro, or maybe you need to take and cut down your, cut down certain aspects of what you're doing, where you, whenever you start to see that, that it, attention span from the actual audience itself just start going down because you get you get a baseline and you get down and if you're lucky you get a baseline that does this this 
and eventually it either levels out before it takes and tapers off or you'll take and get that that smooth and then it's just such a gradual de decline that the video is going to be doing well those are the ones that normally you take and get that you've got 200 300 400 500 600 thousand a million type views those are those type videos where they've got the, the analytics well this video had almost a straight level line for the most part and i was like but it was getting 20 25 000 views per 48 hours it took my channel which had like 400 subs at the time and in a week and a half time off of that video alone no two two and a half weeks off that video alone the channel got monetized but it also showed me, all right, I need to take an extra start learning some stuff about electric vehicles. So I actually geared the channel from reactions to actually looking at electric vehicles and looking at their specs and then giving my thought process on, you know, whether or not, okay, this, this sounds a little bit janky or whatever, but looking at electric trucks that were supposed to be coming out, looking at electric vehicles that were coming out, looking at electric, uh, just more green energy type stuff in general, looking at more tech stuff in general, which for me is right at Mallet because I love tech. So that channel permeated in that way. And it's still, I haven't posted anything on it for a while just because this, the, the eclectic beard blew up so well. Um, but I'd started somewhere in that process. I'd started uh, eclectic beard reactions. Um, oh no, eclectic beard game uh, reactions and gaming or something like that was the original name. I, I can't even like, I've changed the name of the reaction channel like three times so far. So, uh, but I took and actually went back to doing reactions. So I'm taking and making, recording like ten videos one day, all for the reaction channel. So I'm I'm getting two. I say that ten videos, and I take it to another four or five the next day. Sometimes another four or five the day after that. But I take and make sure I did one long extended video for, um, these reviews on like looking at the specs and everything like that and the news that were on certain vehicles that were coming out in, in the EV world or looking at different tech things that you, uh, it, it was, it was getting to be a hard act, uh, to, to balance. And we had the pandemic hit and it's crazy because I went from 400 subs to right over 2000 subs before the pandemic hit. The reaction channel, I went back to taking a look at Grime, Akala, uh, Akala, like Mike Righteous, Pete and Bass, and like just a lot of like the, the UK Grime scene. I was looking at that, and um, I was also there. I had some people that rap over there, and a guy that raps over here that been reaching out to me to be, you know, taking and re reacting to their music whenever they drop new stuff, and. Once the pandemic hit, well, I kind of switched gears and I took and went full bore into the reactions, We're looking at the reactions. Well, that's when I started taking another permeation because I noticed all the differences in the guy's accents and stuff like that. So I looked at accents videos. One well, accents videos had somebody take and request me to actually look at, or no, 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 somebody had requested I take and look at Al Murray because I had looked at Ralph May. Because I was like, you know, I can't just be doing music. You know, all these other channels are taking a look at. Number one, most most reaction channels you take a look at them if they're looking at music, it's either they've got certain big rappers or certain big artists and stuff like that they'll take a look at. I've, if it come out in the '90s or 2000s, for the most part, it was mainstream. I've heard it. Um, underground stuff. That's what I was mainly focused on. That and like the under, like the YouTube rapper type thing, especially. But you, but the YouTube rappers. And then the UK grime scene. So that was what I was looking at. But the UK grime, I was noticing, I was like, man, they, these cats, they've all got different, all got different accents. So that's, that's what led me to actually look at the accents. And then off of the back of a recommendation and the Ralphie May reaction that I did, I was like, hey, look, take a look at Al Murray, uh, name, a, name a country we defeated them. And I did. And at that point, I looked at one video with accents and it was actually a quiz so you know figuring out how many english accents that you can guess did the al murray then did another one looking at different accents across the uk and it just got me interested more in the uk so i started looking at more the comedy more the history more the culture sports and stuff like that. and it 
So this kind of led me down the path I've been on. This right here is going to be another permeation. Like granted, I, I've started a new channel for the podcast itself. That way, um, that way it's not just things don't just take and devolve straight through the podcast. Um, I'll be honest with you though, um, as a, as a content creator, you, I think you, you permeations on what you're doing as far as YouTube is concerned. I think it's natural because as a content creator, number one, you, I think with your own channel, not only with analytics, but also I think just with the, the numbers, once you take and start getting to, and it's, and it's not about numbers for me, it's, it's about community, but you also, you still want to see growth. So I'm still growing. Like there's no two ways about it. I'm still growing, but it's almost, almost feels like with the actual content itself, I've kind of stagnated and I don't, I don't care to take and do that. I've never cared for that in my, whenever I took and worked that whether it be construction or anything else, like I've always tried having upward mobility. So this and the next and the other podcast is starting this week. It's kind of one of those things where one, it adds it's different. It's new stuff. I can add to the channel content wise, this podcast specifically. Yes. There's a lot of talking on it. And the way I take and look at music and other things is going to be different than the straight up just reactions that I do on the channel, but it gives me the chance to actually have content that goes within the, within the realm of what I'm doing on the channel itself, it fits perfectly. So I'm not really taking and going too far outside of what I already do. It's just me more talking about stuff than anything else, but it's still in relationship to it. Even with reviews, I'm, I'm going to take and do as much of a reaction as possible, but uh, with copyright being what it is. And I think one of the things for me that also kind of necessitated this other than two copyright strikes um, is the fact that, not only myself, but a lot of other reactors. And you see this and it happens like two, twice a year, like normally either mid year and then towards the end of the year or it's early year. And then end of the year it's, for whatever reason, always an end of year, but this go around, seems to be a mid year. It's getting harder and harder to get videos out. Even, even stuff that before I have a problem with, like it's almost getting to be where it's like Insta block. As soon as checks are run blocked. And I see other channels that are taking and going through this in the American Reacts um, space. And I know it's happening also in, re in the reactor space as well because I've seen a couple of videos. Like I took a run across a video uh, on a channel and I can't remember the girl's name, but she was talking about it. And she's got over 70,000 uh, subscribers. So it's not like she's a small, you know, she's not a massive channel, but she's not a tiny channel by any means whatsoever either. She was telling her subscribers the reason why she hadn't been posting is because, uh, they put the channel on hold like this. She's 70,000 subscribers. They put her channel on hold. So she's had to start uploading stuff to a second channel. Which is also the reason why I started the second channel, just in case just see why you cover your ass. Like that's good policy for anything you do, but she's not the only one that I've seen, you know, have that problem here in the last, probably I would say about the last two and a half months. I've seen people that, have been they've been having videos blocked that were previously left up like that they'd been up the video's been up for six months a year a year and a half and I, and I get it the way they take and find you know the way they take and do the copyright stuff like that every every company is different I get that but normally you don't see that big of a gap in between when something's posted and when it's blocked normally you get something within if it's not right away, normally it's within that same week you either get that copyright claim or you get the block in and of itself. So the unevenness in the way some of the stuff works, it can be it's really frustrating. So you see a lot of these, you see a lot of reaction channels, and this is one another one of the reasons why I've started uh, this as a podcast is because you see a lot of channels take a move away from the content that you know their subscribers know them for. Granted, your community, if they like your personality they'll take and you know vibe with whatever you're taking and doing but you're not going to take and get the entire community following along it's whenever you're able to take and hit those certain videos that are in the vein of what they subscribe for where they'll take you'll take and see a increase in views over uh something that you've had to switch to because of the way youtube has started actually um relegating stuff 
and I've seen that with too many channels where they've went from reviewing music and comedy and stuff like that to where now they're reviewing uh, TikTok, top tunes, um, like the political political type stuff, like Ben Shapiro taking and you know it, that type of stuff. And it's like I get it; it's what they're doing so they can keep keep their YouTube presence alive. But I don't. I don't want to have to take and go the route where I feel like I have to do that. Like I, I, I enjoy the reaction. I, I enjoy reacting. I enjoy the reaction process. Um, so I want to have, I wanted to take and do something to where even if they get a lot more tight on how reactions are viewed and how they take and let stuff through minimal, minimal music, Video wise, you'll take and see a video in the background, but it'll be different points of where I stop it mostly to where I can take and give my two cents worth of what I'm hearing at the time with links in my description, at least for the YouTube part of it on Anchor, it won't be the same way, but on the YouTube part of it where you can actually go watch the video that I've just took and done a review on if you so choose. So that way I can, I can still take and do things within the same vein, but I've also kind of covered myself for in the future where if like oh no you no you can't be doing this 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 no more well then i've got this way right here of taking and still connecting with my community still taking looking at certain things granted 90 percent of y'all are in the uk and you whether it be the history whether it be you know you come here from the grime or whether you've taken from comedy and stuff like that i'm just trying to take and make sure I've still got a way to take and actually make content that's related to what I enjoy doing on YouTube. I'm going to be honest with you. The other part of it is kind of the fact that um, I'm kind of hitting that brick wall just because there's so many people that have flooded the American React scene as far as the UK is concerned. And granted, I, I enjoy seeing that because that means there's a lot more people that are number one. Um, a lot of times you can tell the ones that truly enjoy act, the actual learning part or taking and building their community and that for me is the coolest part to see as a content creator because you get to see people you get to see the enthusiasm or you get to see you know you can see you can see certain people as you're watching their reactions you can see the wheels kind of turning sometimes whenever they're seeing something they didn't know and seeing that that's a genuine thing that you see within facial expressions i you know whether it be with the mouth the, the face itself the eyes like that's that's for me is one of the coolest things to see. So I don't I don't begrudge anybody, and I've come across that. But I don't really begrudge anybody coming into the American React scene. I don't like seeing people where it looks like they're just jumping on a trend, try to take advantage. I don't care for that type of stuff because that's just not copacetic. But y'all are smart enough that you you suss that out, and they don't go very very far very quick, anyways. But just a simple fact that there's so many people that have jumped within the scene that they can looking at uk stuff at this point it's hard for me to take and look at videos and be like all right so what hasn't somebody looked at before because there's just so many people now it's like anything i go to to try to look at i've always been i've always been a type to where i try to let i try to let stuff breathe for other people so if somebody took and put out a, a video of al murray that i recorded yesterday i'll take and sit on it for two three four weeks or even longer and it's simply for the fact of I don't want to take and put any, you know, I don't want to take and put anything on their shine, especially if they're a smaller channel or something like that. Even if I don't know the person, I, I don't want to take, I don't want to take away from somebody's shine too much. If it's somebody that's within the American Reacts community that I know, well, then I really don't want to take and step on their toes because then I feel like a poor, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing them a disservice because regardless of where either of us sit at subscribers, we're pals. We, it, there's a good chance we take and talk at least once a month or we all check in on each other once a month. So it's one of those things where it's, you don't want to take in for me personally. I don't want to take and do a lot of, I don't want to do retread stuff. Like there's stuff I want to take a look at, but I've got to give enough time to take in the rest of my mind where it's like, y'all aren't being beat over the head with it. Right. Everybody's got different opinions on the stuff they see, but whenever you see it 400 times, at that point, it's a, it's a moot point, in my opinion, regardless of how many opinions you want to take and hear on it. It's a moot point at that point because there's only so many opinions you're going to hear. They're going to be so different from everybody else. Eventually, you're going to get five or six taking land on the same damn opinion on, on whatever video that they're reacting to. 
So that's one of the reasons, that's another reason why I'm like, all right, so I'm kind of getting that, we're getting in that territory where it's getting a little bit harder and harder to find stuff other people haven't covered within this vein. Um, I've still, I do have videos that are still coming out. Like as far as my reaction channel is concerned, the things I will be sticking to will be like open all hours, rising damp, the bottom live, all of the bottom lives. Uh, I think once I finish the worm that turns, it'll probably be all, it, that'll probably be all for me for a while on the two Ronnie's just because that's everybody's favorite stuff too. Kind of like, I think the evil vicar, that's probably, I'll probably look at the, what somebody said, the sales clerk, and there's another one. So there's two more in that same vein of the evil or whatever. So th that'll probably be my last bit of stuff from like the Mitchell and Webb look. Um, I guess I'll have to take and start looking at more Armstrong and Miller or, or, or other stuff like that. Um, and I've had people take and ask about different TV shows and stuff like that. Are you going to look at this? Are you going to look at that? And the problem with that is as a reactor, and I don't know if a lot of people realize. So I can always take and put stuff on. And, and this is true for any reaction channel that looks at music or movies. We can always put stuff on something like um, Daily Motion. Uh, you could try putting it on Vimeo, but Vimeo, they're getting a little bit more strict with their copyright stuff i know taff has had uh stuff taken down i think he does a lot of twitch streaming now for his reactions uh but i know he's had a vimeo a vimeo account taken down because of copyright uh the dmca takedowns and stuff like that so i've had stuff taken off daily motion for dmca lee evans i had lee evans taken off dmca so you can get some shows and stuff like that, and you can put it on Daily Motion. The problem is, the problem is taking and putting stuff outside of YouTube, unless they're part of like your channel memberships or a Patreon. The problem is if if you take putting if you put something outside of YouTube or Patreon or, or your channel membership for people to take and actually see. Outside of that, if you put up something on like Daily Motion or Odyssey or some of these other sites like this, the problem is. You get people to number one leave because they're dissatisfied that you feel like you're having to take and do that or that, that you did that because how dare you? They can't view it on YouTube, which the, the typical YouTube subscriber, they're, you know, people are for the most part cool, but you do got people that are just kind of, they get in their feels about stuff that that's really none of their fucking concern, but it is what it is. Um, so people feel like, oh, He's putting it over here, and I'm not able to take and watch it over here. I'm not going to take and watch him no more. And it's like, what? Fuck ever. The other part of it, you get depressed view. So whereas if I was to take and react to an episode of Bottom, and I was to take and be able to put it on YouTube, I'm looking at, at minimum, at least 25,000 views. Legit. Just straight up 25,000 views. Bare minimum. And, and, and that's just going off of what I know and what I see. Bare minimum, you're going to get like 25 30 thousand views you take and put something like yes minister like a full episode if you put a, a full episode of yes minister on youtube holy hell you're probably looking at another you're probably looking at 25 30 35 40 thousand views so you you could take a look at and all of these are going to get copyright claims so that's that's no problem every reactor you, you're going to take and get copyright claims and that's that's what you expect whenever you upload copyrighted content um like there's only certain stuff that's actually that we do reactions to. It doesn't matter that it's changed the way you take and view it. it. Doesn't matter that it's got the commentary or critiques on it and stuff. It doesn't. None of that stuff matters. It gets copyright claims, so we have to take and find stuff where it's like, okay, this can actually get monetized. I can make this original content to monetize. This type of thing right here can get monetized because the the meeting the fair use is like not hard with some with some stuff whereas other stuff like tv shows it's damn near impossible and rightfully so but the subscriber boost that you'll get off of doing stuff like that see that's where the differential comes in to make it where it's not worth it they can post it on post things um like bottom or yes minister or are you being served or one foot in the grave <laughs> or the carry-on movies, or butterflies, or goodnight sweetheart, or anything else that you want to take and react to, that's where it makes it where it's not worth that differential because you get the press views, you get people that take and get pissy, and they take and actually leave. I've never had an announcement video for anything that I'm putting on Daily Motion 
gain me subscribers. Every time, at least three to five subscribers, I lose. And I'm not worried about the fact that I'm losing subscribers. It's just like you see things as a content creator. It's like, well, that that sucks. Makes it like we're eh, that's not really worth it. Just just not, just not. So that's the reason for the podcast. Like those are the reasons why I've started this podcast. Um, I just I don't know. I, I'm on YouTube so much. You know, I enjoy the content that I create. Some of it is I feel like I'm getting to that point of straining to actually find stuff that other people aren't doing because that's what I've always tried doing. Um, there's still some sports that I've took and reacted to on my channel that I've yet to see any other channels react to as far as it relates to England. There's festivals I've reacted to. I've yet to see anyone else take and react to. It. And that's, all, that's because I, I look for that stuff and actually ask people in the comments and everything like that hey what's some what's some traditions that you know folks might not know that's that's the way i've I've done it but it's getting harder and harder to take and do that to where you're finding videos so between that and trying to take and make it to where if they tighten down on stuff reaction wise on youtube in the future i've still got a way of doing content around stuff i love i love to take and do might not be reaction completely it might be more view style but i still get to take and talk with y'all and i still get to give you my two cents on what i'm what i'm hearing or what i'm seeing which is for me i enjoy that i enjoy that i enjoy the feedback i get from that so this is kind of the, the way of doing that now you'll be able to take and find this podcast on anchor fm and spotify and there will be links in both for the episode uh in the description and in the pinned comment on the channel. I'm also, I've started a like Musings YouTube channel, and until the, I can get the podcast up and going more, it's going to be double posted. It's going to be posted here. Some segments from it are going to be posted here on the Eclectic Beard, but they'll also be cross-posted on the Eclectic Musings uh, YouTube channel. Now, I do have another uh, podcast, and I'm starting on Thursday. For anybody that takes and has watched me for a while, you stopped in, Whenever me and Blake TV do the BNA show, we've got a stream starting on Thursday called High Thoughts. Me and him um, partake of a little, whether it be weed, Delta 8, CBD, something like that. Uh, we're just going to sit and have conversations that normally we're not going to take and have on the BNA show. Um, and it's a chance for us as buddies because I love him to death. He's like a brother to me. It's a chance for us to hang out more, man. Really. So, whatever conversations that ensue from this, like we're not going to have any theme shows for the most part, but we are going to have subjects that we do want to take and touch on and probably going to take and be broad ranging just because, well, different stuff either interests us or pisses us off. So yeah, hopefully you stop through for that and I'll actually, that'll, first the first podcast episode of that will be uh, posted on the eclectic beard channel as well so um going forward though going forward so i don't one of the things i was saying is you know earlier is you take a look at any youtube channel and they've all had different permeations like you take a look at mr beast mr beast started off basically doing it's like minecraft type videos and then like gaming type videos and he was talking about youtube type drama stuff like that's how mr b started and now he's taking and making videos and his last one tried going 30 days without eating like all he did was drink water now granted this cat right here is one of the most philanthropic uh philanthropic people that you'll take and ever see on youtube just because i, I colin and dar i believe is the podcast that i was listening to and they actually took and did an interview with him he invited them to his warehouse that he bought the property that he bought there in north carolina and showed them his financials and they're like "Ooh, it's a razor thin margin because basically everything he brings in he, he either it either goes out towards giveaways or towards his uh food bank or other philanthropic endeavors that he does so he operates on a razor thin margin but it's crazy his last video being 30 days without eating number one why would you want to go 30 days without eating i granted you're going to take and get some weight loss benefits and at some point in time you take and get probably leveling out of different different hormones, probably different uh <laughs> probably different hormones, 
different chemicals within the body, <laughs> but 30 days without eating. So he, he tried it and he, uh, well, he, he lost because Gordon Ramsay cooked for him. Uh, who wouldn't want to eat Gordon Ramsay's food? So just, I just find it interesting, all the stuff, like taking a look at people like him and, and looking at how their channel started to looking at, now he's got a full on, he's got a full on just straight up, got Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast Gaming, Mr. Mr. Beast Reacts, Mr. Beast uh, Philanthropy, like he's got four different channels and the Philanthropy one, if you haven't checked that one out, in my opinion, that's even cooler than, than the original Mr. Beast channel just because of stuff they've done, like they took in so far, they've raised and donated over $3 million worth of supplies, uh, beds, food, clothes, um, toiletries, things like that to the people that are affected by what's going on in the Ukraine right now. So it, I think that's even more cool than his main channel. But all of that starting from doing goofy videos in the driveway and stuff like that and then switching over. So it, One thing's for sure, the cat's a genius. Doesn't matter what he does at this point, like the, the idea to take and do a video of not eating anything for 30 days, everybody's going to tune in. Everybody. And, of course, within like two minutes' time, it had like over 5 million views. So, um, other than that, it seems like every video I watch, it's got, that's on YouTube, like Patrick CC here, rise of, controversial rise of, Pete Davidson. Um, seems like every one of them have some type of sponsored ad that they do for Skillshare. I find it find it odd that there's so many people. Now, granted, I think Skillshare, if you take and actually are able to take a class on Skillshare and it helps you improve in a certain area, whether it be video editing or whatever it is, I think it's really cool that you know that you're able to take and do that so many of these youtube so many youtubers are either most of them i see just talking like they're taking and promoting it granted it's all monetary like that's not bullshit same reason why people taking that raid shadow legends ah, da, 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 download now <sighs> it's the same reason it's money like right? let's let's be honest here but I think as far as ads are concerned, like there's not many ads that you can take and do or not many sponsorships. I think that you could have that probably aren't, as, you know, that would be as useful as something like that, because you think about it, you're taking classes on stuff that you're interested in from professionals within whatever field that you're, that you're interested in. But it's, I know the Patrick CC, that one, uh, Another guy that was taking and speaking, uh, Twee or whatever. Yeah. Twee, I think in Ghana, like is one of the languages there speaking it fluently to the people, you know, surprising the people there by speaking it fluently Skillshare there. I think I've heard Joe Rogan with Skillshare. Like I know I've heard Jay's two cents with skill. Like it's just everywhere, but for all the ads that you can take and see on YouTube, while you take and see the mid rolls or you see sponsored ads and stuff like that. You got like Manscaped, you've got the Raid Shadow Legends, you've got so many different others that just seem so banal and useless and stuff like that. Skillshare actually seems like one to where you hear people taking and actually talking about it and stuff like that. It seems like it's actually useful. But how bad would it suck if you was to actually do Skillshare? Like you want to take and learn how to, you know, do photography better or something like that. And it's like a C grade type class. There's no better way for a company to make money than be like, hey, this is how we're going to get shit lifted off the ground. We're going to take and give YouTubers with a big following. We're going to give them, <laughs> we're going to give them money, you know, 500 here, 700 there, 1500 there, you know, 125 here for smaller channels and stuff. We're going to take and give them money to take and promote our products. That way we got people that flood in. We can even give them a discount, stuff like that. Granted, if, you're, if you've got a ship product nine times out of ten, you're probably not going to take and I say that. See Raid Shadow Legends. I don't know if that's selling out or just what, but yeah, Raid, that's not a, that great of a, that's, that's actually horrific, so. 
great way to take and promote a shit, you know, get a get your shit project out in front of a lot of people. Just taking sponsor uh sponsor ad time <laughs> for some YouTubers. But of all of them that you can take and have, it seems like that'd be that that'd be that's most useful. Yeah, I just find it I just find some of the ads that you take and see it's it's a great way if you're a good business to get in front of a lot of good people, but on the flip side of it, like if you're <laughs> If you're not so great, but you need to take and make money, like if you got some money to spend to make that money, doing sponsored ads through uh, through YouTubers is not a bad way to take and go. So going forward, we're going to take and going ahead and get into some music. So this isn't so much due to uh, do the person that's, because I've never heard this person, Burn a Boy. But it's got Ed Sheeran in it. Normally he gets on something. He spices it up a little bit, and normally he doesn't take and get on many artists that aren't talented. He doesn't take and get on a lot of their stuff for the most part. For the most part, not always right on that. I give him the benefit of the doubt because I've seen the videos with him and Devlin. So just saying, for the most part. So we're take a look at Burn a Boy for my hand featuring Ed Sheeran. I like that little bit of the singing right there at the at the front because it's got a little bit of a rough edge to it, but it's. It's in a lower register, but it's got a little bit of a rough, rough edge to uh, like the corners of it. it that's the only way it is. it's like a rough around the edges, but it's so it's not a lot of times you hear singing and either they get higher than what their voice allows for or they take an auto tune. A lot of times this is sung at a lower register and it's got it's it's got roughness to it. So it, it's. The music isn't overpowering either, so I, I like that. It, it's so far, I'm liking what I hear. So this is like two songs so far, because this is talking about you've been by my side every moment. Like this is talking about relationships. Um, this is like second or third video that I've looked at as far as podcasts is concerned, where it's been about relationships. I love that. Whenever I'm lonely, you're there for my soul. Just that having somebody that's there like that, like you can be, you can have a family, you can be with somebody, but you can still feel all alone and have that, have that person there with you that just feeds your soul. So if you're feeling like it, it fills that spot that feels like emptiness. Like I love that line, dude, his voice is so understated. Like he's not, he's not singing loud. He's not over the top. He's not bombastic. He's not like in it like he's singing in a in a low, not only you know just s register, but also a low tone of voice and the music. It's it's not overpowering it. So I'll, I'm loving the play between the voice and and the music itself. But his voice is just it's rough around the edges, but it works. I love. I, I, I'm digging this and the, and the content within the song itself, like having that somebody that's, that's like your soulmate talking about wherever, you know, wherever you're at, that's where I'm, you know, that's where, that's where I'm home. Um, wherever you're down at, you know, wherever, uh, you're down at, just let me know, like so wherever, wherever you are, that's where I'm at. Basically it, that's, you know, you don't hear a whole lot of stuff in that vein, um, musically a lot far as relationships are like you do like if you listen to r&b and some stuff like that but uh this is and this does have an r&b flair to it but it also got that got some of the drums and stuff like that to give it a little bit more of a pop flair but I, i'm digging this I, I really am hold you for my hand i love that I, it's got a very it's got a nice crit it's got a does the drums take and give it a, a nice caribbean vibe to it I, but just the content so far the song because it's not over cliched cliched or cheesy but it's it's so understated in its delivery but pack some weight to it i like that okay so the cheese is coming in through through ed just saying like the cheese like it's, he's not got bad lyrics at all but it's straight up cheese i think now one of the things even with his being a little more cheese than what and a little more cliche as well. Talking about you know, time standing still and everything like that. Just, just cliche type stuff and it, maximum cheese effect. But his voice being at a higher register, and he's not he's not singing it overly loud either. But the way that 
the juxtaposition between their voices and his is a little bit, you know, Berna's being uh, rougher, his being more smooth, polished, higher register, still fitting in with the song. Just, I like this whole play on things, man. I, I'm really digging this. This will, this will wind up going to my Spotify playlist. I like that. I want to be dancing with you forever. You see through the stone and take me for who I am. So that hard exterior, you, you, she sees through that. Like, this is the person that completes him, basically. This is a, a, a relationship where it's it's mutual res, mutual love, mutual, like, just affinity for each other. Like, that, that completionist type deal. Like, if you're a gamer, your girl is, like, a soulmate, and she, you know, you do stuff for her that's, you know, makes her feel feel right, and she does stuff for you to take and make you feel right. Like, that's, you got completionist level achievement unlocked right there. Just saying. Okay, I dig that. I, I'm really, I like that song. That was, not only was it lyrically, you got a bit of a juxtaposition between the first verse and the second verse, because... Burner Boy, I think his is more, it sounded more genuine, it sounded more authentic. Whereas Ed, he didn't do a bad job. It's just, it's a little bit more cheese, but more cliche sounding and cheese. But it it didn't take and make the song, like it didn't make, it's not a horrible verse by any any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's really good. I don't think it's as good as the first verse. But talking about that, you know, you want it being your everything without taking it, you know, it being complete all-out adulation putting her on a pedestal or anything like that that like that whole you complete me and that's what this song is it's a you complete me song without taking and putting your woman on a pedestal because a lot of times you see in relationships where either the woman oh he completes me and that that dude is put on a pedestal or you see the man and you get the songs where it's putting the woman on the pedestal it's not doing that whatsoever it's one of those ones you you know you're the food for my soul basically that i need you're the one that takes and you're you're where i belong at and wherever you are that's where i'm at and you know i've got you to hold you know i've got you to hold for my hand so basically you know it, it's your hand i'm holding through life and the way it was put it's beautifully put i i love this i absolutely love this so might have to take a look at more burner boy stuff uh so but yeah this is this was really really nice i really enjoyed this if i had taken rate this song like out of 10 or something like that i'd give it a solid eight and a half out of 10 like this is really really solid so i don't think it's going to take and get a whole lot of radio play to be honest with you just because the way radio and everything works these days but um for listening purposes like you can't do a whole lot better for new songs take a look at black bear's new song the idea um he's I didn't know who Black Bear was until I seen him on an MGK song. Now my wife has listened to him, and she loves all that stuff. I don't know if she's heard this one or not. I know I, I don't think I have. Like I, what released like two or three days ago or something like that. So, and I don't listen to radio for the most part. Like unless, unless the wife puts radio on while we're driving. Like I'll listen to Spotify and my playlist. So, taking a you know, take a listen to this because I this this cat has got some talent. Okay, so right off the rip, the way it starts, uh, just the video itself, like this isn't the first time we've seen Black Bear in like a desert type setting. Uh, it starts off with a nice, smooth singing, almost looks like Travis Barker there. And then you take and get to where the music's about to play. Yeah, he's got it's Travis Barker on the drums. So Travis Barker's a busy fella. That's all, like he's... Seems to be in everything these days. And right off the rip, after that IIAI stuff that he does, uh, you get a, 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 like the bouncy type guitar, uh, the guitar sound that you had in the early 2000s um, punk scene or pop punk on, uh, radio scene. Oh, wow. Are you going to love me or, or the idea? So, you know, talking about he knows, you know, he's in the girl's head or whatever. She's, she's thinking of him or whatever. He's worried about, you know, everything you know them taking a basic a relationship taking and actually awakening his demons and then asks a question are you in love with me or just the idea so now are, are you actually do you love me or are you in love with the idea of loving me like you, and a lot of times people can't tell the difference between the two they think they love somebody but they just they're in love with the idea of loving them without taking and knowing the 
full scope or consequences they've taken come along with it. Wait, what was that? Oh, the way the second verse starts off is hella awesome. Too many, too many skeletons in the closet. God, if you're listening, you need to call me drunk off the feeling. Like that opening line, that opening bit right there. That's that's a killer opening for any verse. That whole second verse. Oh, that whole opening for the second verse. Skeletons in my closet. God, if you're listening, you need to call me drunk off the feeling. I don't want to stop it. Like what? Like everybody's everybody's got their demons they wrestle with. They that gives you your your skeletons in the closet. A lot of times we take and we other than blaming ourselves, we'll take and blame God for our troubles and stuff like that. So we feel that whatever we've gone through, you know, to put us in the situations to give us the skeletons that could have been prevented, you know, it, it, that whole but like just that whole play in right there. Drugs don't help me, it's a problem. Don't oh my god. All right, I'm going to shut up and let the music breathe. Dude, this is just, oh, I love this. Just the whole, lyrically, like it's not nothing major. But the way he's taking it, putting it through, because it, it's talking about the drugs aren't helping. You know, talking about being in a relationship and the, you know, both, both of them apparently are on drugs or whatever. And now he's asking her, how do you sleep without me there? So how do, you know, Without me there with you, because they're basically a drug to each other. How are you sleeping without me? Like, bro. Too many bridges I've done burn up. Why are you only hit why are you only hitting me when you're only turned up? Like, so he's burned all these bridges, like with uh, with people and everything like that. Probably due to relationship or whatever, but the only time you they call is basically when they're messed up. So that plays into the whole you waking up my demons like this song plays in and on itself in so many different ways it's really cool to see are you in love with the heartbreaking stuff because when i saw you last so like it's a rocky tumultuous relationship and basically you know you you see those people that they it seems like they thrive on the drama that they, they they strive on like you see those relationships where it's like one week they're together the next week they're broken up next week they're together it's like all right y'all figure out what the fuck y'all are and it seems to be, you know, talking about that type of thing, but just all the extra stuff that you don't hear about for the most part. And a lot of those relationships on Facebook, at least three nights in a row and Hollywood's on fire. Three nights in a row doing uh, three nights in a row doing uh, doing blow. Tell me, are you tired? Like that's say so burn out. I'm loving the whole vibe to this song. Like it's upbeat that the, the lyrically it's not a, it's not so much it's not a beat as much as it is it's got it's it's not dark subject matter you know a toxic relationship but the but the guitar work especially you know travis's drumming and stuff like that it, it's it's it gives you that upbeat sound so you're gonna take and get hooked on it while taking and give you some heavy heavier lyrics about you know some some subject matter that's you know, about a toxic relationship that if you listen to the lyrics, it's like, wow, that's that's pretty messed up. But the way that it's presented to you, like, I, I'm digging this. I, I'm liking the whole vibe to this thing. Yo, this retro 2000s punk, pop punk vibe is just, that's that's what I that's what I listen to a lot. I, mean, I listen to pop punk, the emo, screamo, whatever you want to take and call it, and uh, post-hardcore stuff. I love this sound. Because it's on the lighter side of everything, like it, I love this. Like I think that's one of the things that's setting up the whole vibe for me, and the one of the reasons why I really enjoy it. It's that nostalgia effect. But the song isn't bad. The song isn't bad at all. You you can hear there's songs that are out there that are in that pop punk vein from like the 2000s, late 90s, and the subject, you know, the lyrically, it's just like yeah, this is kind of you know, this kind of fucking flat here, homie. Like yeah, y'all got the you know y'all got the jump riffs and everything like that. Really, you know y'all got those down pat. You can tell because you can jump up, you can you know come down and strum the right. But it, it lyrically, it's just not there. It's not doing nothing for me, dude. This right here not only does it have the musical package to it, but it's got the lyrical lyrical package with it to actual complete the whole vibe. So visually on this video, visually on the video, it's you've got. The juxtaposition of the desert, so you, you've got this, it's like dry and barren for the most part, other than where he's next to that fence. Even then, you don't see what's past the fence for the most part. But you see, like, it's, there's nothing there. And that, that whole thing of nothingness, nothing being there, even as far as relationship is concerned, that's a point 
And I think the video takes and kind of visualizes that as well. But when you're talking about the demons and doing like blow for three days or, you know, taking and jump starting his demons and bad relationship stuff like that. Well, then you take and see the people and it's the people are shot other than the females. The one time on that bed it's dark and with the man and woman, it's, it's got a, it's got a like layer of grime to it. It looks like everything around them has a layer of like dirt and grime to it. And to take and go to lyrical, I think the video on this does just as good of a job getting the point across to the lyrics is what the lyrics do. And the lyrics taken to being about toxic relationships and, you know, the, the on again, off again, drug fueled, uh, senselessness and stuff like that. And how somebody, they think they're in love and they keep trying to, you know, they keep returning and returning. Really that the question has to be asked of whether you're, you actually love that person or you're in love with the idea of being in love with them because you're only, you're not taking to bringing out the best in each other. And that whole concept plays throughout, not only with the lyrics in this, but it also plays out within the visualization that you see on the screen. I dig this. I completely, this is another song that's going into my Spotify playlist. Cause this right here, not only do you take and have a solid song, but you get to the two thousands pop punk nostalgia vibes off of it because, well, that's what it sounds like between the guitar and, you know, the instrumentation, especially with the the guitar bounce riff, basically, and you know it, that poppy like upbeat bouncy riff, and Travis's drumming, like that's that's exact vibe you get off of this. And it, for me, it's just a well put together song. So I really enjoy this. All right, so this video we're be looking at John Legend, or this this is going to be this video, this review, reaction, whatever you want to call it. But this is going to be John Legend featuring Muni Long, Honey. It's been a minute since I've heard anything from John Legend. I'm not really, not an overly big John Legend fan. Like, he makes some good music. I'm not going to, there's no two ways about that. Man's got, like, silky smooth voice. Like, he's got R&B, uh, jazzy. Like, he's got, he's got all of that in his pocket. Like, he's got no problem with these styles of music. Um, He can even, he even, he's, he does pop. He's like, he's, he's interchangeable in the type of music that he can do like he's hella talented so I, you can't take anything away from john legend but as far as his catalog from what i've heard outside of like some of the what green light and then um oh the one love song that he had that just got played for like the next two fucking years after he released it like really those are the only two songs that i've heard that i'm like all right cool I, you know i'm glad this song is on because normally i hear it and it's either so slow that it puts me to sleep or I'm just, I'm not digging the lyrical con content within it. So we're going to take a look at this. John Legend featuring Muni Long, Honey. So already the visuals, you got the bees. You got him on the floor. Apparently he's partying hard the night before. Bro, his voice is just like buttery smooth, dude. Like he is just, he's got a voice of just. When if you, you, you want to hear something that's soothing, you, his voice. Like you could put his voice to take a narrate stuff or sing something, and yeah, he's got a buttery smooth voice, dude. Like for real, talking about it, he would take and do anything for a taste. He's talking about honey makes the world go round. Um, I think this is a euphemism for pussy. Just saying. And so you got the honey. Not only do you have the honey around the the frame on the picture here in the video, but you've also got the picture. You also got the honey that he wipes off the wall. Now it's dripping off his hand, so it gives you that wet sticky type like yeah i think he's straight up talking about pussy oh yeah don't you love that golden glisten when you put your finger in it oh yeah this is definitely about pussy but like the way he the way he's singing about it like it's not overly raunchy or anything like that or what until she took and brought that line even then yeah it that's more in your window than actual raunch so i mean it's he makes sex songs sound classy. <laughs> oh my God. Don't stop. <laughs> Don't waste a drop. Like, oh yeah, this definitely, she, cause she's talking about she, the honey's waiting on him once he gets home, you know, or whenever he gets home, you know, talking about don't stop till legs rock. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> don't better not waste a drop. Like, yo, yeah, they, this is definitely 
but like it's a classy sex song so it's hard to take and you there's nothing wrong with sex songs that's luther vandros he made songs he made baby making music so did keith what keith sweat so did you know usher like that there's nothing wrong with baby making music man it, it there's a need for that in the world there's a need for that in the world like granted we're gonna see how much baby making music people will listen to during the pandemic because people were shut down for almost two damn years couldn't hardly leave the house you was married you either drank or you fucked so we're gonna see but this would be one of those songs that have been perfect for that time so he, he's making he's made a he's so far this is a very classy uh smooth r&b-ish baby making sex song is what it is so many ways to explore every day wanting more you got the you got the imagery of the rose dripping the honey so yeah yeah because you know flower yeah anyway okay that bit right there is so distorted whenever he's saying whatever he's saying like that is distorted as hell honey 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 dripping down i said we go john legend future muni long this is not one that'll probably wind up like in a regular type playlist for me like it's it's not a bad song whatsoever. Like he made it, he made a classy sex song. Like that's that's not front what this is. He made a classy sex song, equating pussy with honey. Like so, let's let yeah, let's be real on that. And you have her adding in talking about is waiting on you whenever you get home. Uh, you know, taking and putting your finger in, and you know, not stopping until you know her legs are basically shaking and. You know, don't waste a drop and just the imagery with the with the honey running down the walls, the honey on the hands and the honey on the flowers. It very it's not done overly sensually as far as the lyrical content, but within the actual imagery of the of the video itself, it adds a sensuality to it. Um just yeah, definitely definitely a sex song. Um it's baby making music. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I like it. It's, it's not bad whatsoever. Like, I don't know if this would make it into the baby making playlist, but it's definitely, you know, on the B side of it. So take a look at one more thing, at least, if not two. All right. So this, this next group, ASPA video or song is girls. Now never looked at K-pop. I've looked at Japanese rock, never looked at K-pop. So this is a Korean girls group, right? And uh, I just figure, why not? I guess it, they could be my introduction to K-pop. I like discovering all kinds of new music. I mean, it's just, there's no reason to take and tie yourself down and be like, oh, yeah, only listen to this right here. You're denying yourself taking and actually seeing either viewpoints or instrumentation orchestration you know song structure and everything like that in a different manner than what maybe it's done in, in your preferred style of music like that I, I never understand people don't only listen to one type of music because you're, you're limiting yourself you're limiting yourself granted everybody knows what they like so you know a preferred style i could if i had to take and if i had to take and say what style i prefer i prefer country or pop punk like 2000 90s 2000s pop punk like just no two ways about it Behind that, probably be alternative slash like heavy metal. I say slash is because a lot of the heavy metal kind of veered onto the alternative side almost in the 90s. I love that type of music. And then past that, you probably got, then you got hip hop. And past that, then you, well, I, actually, before the hip hop, you'd have uh, post hardcore type stuff emo po post hardcore whatever you want to call it that and then probably rap and then probably pop but having all of that to take and draw from and listen to i think you get a sense of like okay there's certain ways that these different genres take and actually structure things and you know there's some similarities and you know it, in some of the ways that some stuff is done it, it it's really cool to take and see that so this being you know they're being from korea I'm sure they do their pop very, you know, probably a little bit differently, but it's got to be some, some similarities and there's talent all over the world. So why limit yourself just to one country? So let's go ahead. And I've got 
I've got the closed captions on just so I can actually, if it's not done in English, because you know, it's Korean and all that, um, maybe don't have the English up there, but uh, we're going to take a look at this. Already the music, like the the, the, the little bit of da, 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 that type of, because it's, it's a high. It's not like bass or anything like that. De, 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 de. Like the way that's done, that high, that's a nice little way to take and come in with something because it, it, it gives it a very stark beginning so it catches your attention. I think a lot of good songs uh, start that way. The opening catches your attention. And it just, if it's an earworm or if it's just a really good song afterwards, you're going to take and want to pay attention because the opening got your attention on it. A little bit of electro to it, a little bit of like, you can hear the woo, woo. Like that's, so I wonder how much of like different stuff they take and meld to make their sound. All right, so they definitely, they're pretty. They don't look overly young but they don't they definitely don't look old um pop and locking right off the rip so they got the choreographed dance moves and stuff like that right off the rip uh but other than that like put them in the girl group boy boy band type era here in the u.s and uh that bit of way it lends itself into hip-hop uh once it gets past that initial intro to it and it definitely would be could get radio play over here if it was done in english so they they come in with some swagger they're not afraid of whoever talking about black mountain talking about it's a deadlier war black mamba not scared of not scared of your boot whatever that is and so they they got some they got some swagger to them they got some yeah they got some swag to some, some swagger to them they got some attitude all right all right cool cool wait 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 wait, wait, wait. So we go from rap to like a rock edge, huh? So they're they're going through the paces on genres. It almost sounds like because it starts with like a like electro electronic type sound, like a, a electro dance type sound to it, almost like the dubstep, almost like at least the beginnings of it. And it goes to straight up like rap, like girl group rap type sound. Then it's switched to uh, rock so far, and now it's done switched over again so like there, there's and it seems like there's a different sound for every member so far that's the other thing i'm noticing there's a different sound for every member that's coming up there and actually singing which is interesting because you don't see that in other you didn't you didn't see that here in the u.s beautiful more poppy more smooth uh like sing style on this one so like yeah the the like every member's got their is is showcasing a different style for every member. Okay. I so said definitely got some swagger to them and it don't matter if they're singing it, rapping it or whatever they're doing, they got some swagger to them. Like in the way they're doing the different styles though, it, it's switching it up, but it's not done in such a way that it shock it's a shock to the system. I love it cuz lyrically they go from from sweet to like just total badass at the flip of a switch. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> Talking about they're taking it, you know, basically they're out here, you know, they're, they're not trying not, you know, they're not out to take and get swindled or taken advantage of, and they're just out to take and spread goodwill, but don't fuck with them, basically. Like, don't fuck with us. <laughs> we them girls. They done said that. We them girls. Like, don't fuck with us. <laughs> We're nice. <laughs> We're nice, but don't fuck with us. <laughs> I love the juxtaposition on this, yo. Put them with American hit makers in the early 2000s when the girl groups and the boy bands were big and they'd have, they'd have fucking murdered it, yo. They, like, they'd, have, they'd have slayed. <laughs> they, they, oh, because just the swagger they take and have. That swagger is just, it just oozes. Like, they look all sweet and innocent, but don't, like, that, they give off that hard, that, you know, that, that don't fuck with me vibe <laughs> so well in this. I right, said so that was interesting. Like I, I dug the video. Like there's so much going on musically, visually, stylistic. Like everything's. And here's my only complaint as an American taking and watching. Like whether it be like the Japanese rock or whether it be like now this. My only complaint is 
you I wonder how much gets lost in translation lyrically whenever you're taking a look at the closed captions like I was doing. But also, you know, I don't know the culture over there, so I don't know exactly what all the references are. So it, it, a lot of it goes over my head, and it, it's, it appears lyrically to be disjointed. While the music itself, I love the different stylistic changes that were in it. A lot Visually, this is a visual treat because you got so much stuff going on, them taking it basically with the them backing up that you don't fuck with them basically that you know or you don't mess with them basically the in them kicking butt in the video itself um you know even one with a katana sword or whatever having that uh interposed in between them taking and doing like the the dances like that we've seen here in the 2000s that when the, during that time of period when you know lou, lou perlman and Bro backstreet boys and nsync or britney spears or christina aguilera or destiny's child with the pop and lock and stuff like that you the inner inner position of all that but visually like going between real world digital and everything like real world digital and everything like that's really visually and and sonically it's really it's cool lyrically i don't know what the hell's going on like all i know is they're sweet like they're just trying to take and spread goodwill they got each other's back don't fuck with them but they'll fuck you up like that's what I got off of that. Granted, that's not a bad message to have whatsoever, but just the way that the lyrics are presented on the screen itself, and it, it was like, oh, oh, I didn't get some of the references to to some of the stuff that's in there either, because apparently, it, you know, it's going to be Korean references and everything like that. So, but it makes me want to take me like, all right, so who, what does more of their stuff sound like? And who else is out there like them or whatever? Just because it's a different culture, music, e even musically, it's a different culture. So, could, as an outsider looking in, if you're not fascinated by this kind of stuff, like, I think you need your head checked. Like, I really do. I, you you kind of need your head checked, um, because what other what other girl group have you heard to where they go to like? five or six different stylistic changes without it being a shock to the system or sounded sounding so disjointed that it doesn't sound like it goes together. Somehow they made this all work. Granted, it's a lot different than what we have here in the States with something that's similar, but it worked. It worked stylistically the way that they took it all presented their own personas and their own attitude throughout the song. And then the way that the presentation was done visually for, for each of them, really just I, I think it was a killer job on that point but it plays back into because you got the you got individuals within groups over here but they're just within the group and you know you might have one or two of them be the you know the, the leads or the star or whatever but you're not going to take and get such stylistic differences between all of the members and that's what you've seen on this stuff like this and the cultural differences for me is just it's a it's really cool to see. It's really cool to see. So that's going to be it for this podcast. Now, granted, I record another one on Fridays because normally new music gets released. I'll probably be releasing some music from then and, you know, or I'll probably be reviewing some music from then and some stuff that gets released on Thursday as well as Friday. Now, granted, I've got about four other videos on the list I could have gone through, but in, in in the sake of like, all right, we'll take an easier way into this, right? We'll take and find the perfect, that fine line between where it's going on for way too long or where it's not quite long enough. You want to take and hear maybe a couple more of the newer songs. We'll find that as we take and go along, right? So I figure this is a good stopping point. Um, hopefully you enjoy it. I know I enjoy doing it. I, I've really, I've once I decided to take and relaunch the podcast and what direction I wanted to take it, I'm thoroughly... I look forward to like, all right, this day right here, I'm going to set aside this time and let me take a look at the subjects that I want to take a look at, maybe talking points, which I might start doing some more scripting because I'm not I, flying by the seat of your pants with a podcast isn't going to be really well, uh, at least for this type of podcast, isn't going to be really well, just isn't, I don't think. So I might have taken a, you know, come up with some topics beforehand and do a little bit more study on them. This was just right off the top of my head, some stuff I had seen in the last couple of days. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. You know, I give you a little bit, you know, I give you a little bit of, you know, reason for restarting, 
you know my views on a couple of things and it hopefully you enjoy the music uh reviews as well they'll wind up being like full reactions in some form or fashion whether it be on the eclectic beard main channel or whether it be on the podcast channel itself on youtube because on just straight up the podcast on anchor or spotify is not going to have the music in it for the most part it just isn't because copyright concerns and rightfully so so you'll take and get most of the review part you'll get reaction part on the different channels so yeah hopefully you enjoy it hopefully you know if there's any new music that you're looking forward to that maybe you think i might miss but would enjoy coming up in the next couple days or next week do me a favor leave me a comment and i'll definitely take a look at it all right so that'll you know we'll take that'll be one of the videos that i take a look at because it's new music and i say new music i mean like within the last week week and a half that's what i'm talking about so hopefully you enjoyed it look out thursday on uh yeah anyways y'all be good to each other love yourselves peace